Today we're going to look at casting on right on to the cast on comb. It's a feature that appears in the older brother manuals and it requires a particular comb. You are looking at two brother cast on combs. This one is relatively recent and they look very much alike uh, except for this one is very beat up and very old and it has a feature that the newer ones don't have. I know that these are available up through model 840 because I've just been looking at the manual. Sometime after that this little hinged brace disappeared and to do the cast on we're talking about you must have one with this brace. It used to appear in brother manuals and it doesn't in the more recent ones because they changed the comb and it's no longer a possibility. The part at the bottom which is more obvious is not actually the important part. It's like a little handle and it's turning this which allows us to hang this comb on the gate pegs. Now because this is in somewhat beat up condition before I come back and show you how to do the cast on I've got to spend a few minutes straightening these old bedraggled pegs. Here's the setup prior to casting on. The hooks are sticking up and they are coming out towards us and I need to straighten another one. The little handle is hanging on the end gate peg because we've manipulated this lever so it will do that. Same thing on the other side. And take note, this is somewhat counterintuitive, the hooks are towards you, open end towards the person who's doing the knitting. At this point, thread the carriage and you should be holding the yarn in one hand and knitting with the other. But I can't do that and get the camera where you can see it. So I have tried tying mine and we're going to hope that works. And across we go. Technically this will work with the needles in normal working position, which is this. But my preference is to push them to hold position and then set the carriage to end so that it will knit back from hold. I think it avoids some complications. And across we go, right across that comb. See the needles came out between the tines of the comb. Now there is a loop around each needle and the near us end of the loop is around the cast on comb. So we can come over here and turn the hinge and let the comb drop down. We'll do that on both sides. Now the cast on comb is hanging in each of those loops giving it a little bit of a downward pull and creating a closed cast on not because you really have yarn around in a complete circle around each needle or a stitch encircling each needle but because of the presence of the comb. Do be careful on the side that you knitted towards you need to free the yarn from the comb otherwise you'll get a long yarn loop and from this point it should knit pretty normally. It'll sound a little funny the first row because you'll hear it passing those hooks but it should not jam if it tries to stop because something is a bit wrong. See how nicely that works? Of course this comb is crazy long for this little swatch because it's the only one I have left that has these gate peg hangers left on it. Here's an example of why you need to be careful to keep these tines of this comb in good condition. I thought I had installed it correctly. I hung it on each end. I brought my needles forward. But do you see what I see? There are two needles between these two tines. That will never work. Let me see if I can get this one pulled back and correctly positioned. The second one 
should be on the other side of the tine. If I was going to use this comb a lot, I would need to spend more time than I have straightening and perfecting. In fact, it's in pretty bad condition, and this isn't the cast on I use most, so maybe a while before it gets that attention. But the whole premise is unworkable without a needle between each pair of tines, and no pair should have two needles between. Once the cast on is made, that very first pass, you can put your initial yarn tail under this yarn clip to keep it out of trouble. Now, once I remove the comb, we actually have live open stitches. So this is not the way you would start a garment. It is a great quickie start for a swatch. There are ways that you can alter it so it could be a garment start, although they're not the best looking methods. But the way that I would use it most is to cast on and let this be my waist yarn. Now do a cast on such as an e-wrap or a chain stitch. But since that comb will be offering a little bit of pull down, your real cast on will be very neat and won't be difficult to knit off and will not be impacted by the stresses of being the first row at the very bottom of a garment. So this in my hand would be waist yarn and my real garment would start above. Or you would be looking at a swatch. Here's an example of what I mean. If the yellow is waist yarn, I've just e-wrapped the stitches, the same needles again, in my main yarn color. And then I can knit on. I'll show you a few rows from now. If you don't know how to e-wrap, I have a whole video on cast-ons called Casting On with the Answer Lady, and I encourage you to take a look at that. Here's how it would look. The bright pink is my real project. This is my waist yarn. And when I wanted to release the waist yarn, I would snip it there and there and just pull it out, leaving a nice, clean, e-wrapped edge that had never been stressed in any way. So, quick review. The newer white comb will not do the job. It does have a yarn clip, but it does not have the hanger that allows it to hang on the gate pegs. And if you notice, they're obviously made to be used in opposite directions because the yarn clip should be towards the person knitting. And the hooks on this one are towards the person knitting, reminding us that's how we hang it. This one has the hooks away, and they have jumped down into my bed. The hooks are facing away, and the yarn clip is facing towards. So it was designed to be hung with the hooks towards the machine. One other thing is that if your sponge bar is in poor condition, the machine may knit stockinette, but it may not do this cast on. I'm pushing up from below. This is a relatively new sponge bar, so it takes considerable pressure to get the needles to bounce. I can do it, of course, but the force is keeping of the good sponge bar, it's keeping them down. If they were flopping around, as they would without a good sponge bar, when the loops were supposed to go around the needle and below the um, gate peg, they might not all make it. Some of them might hang up on the gate pegs. And that creates all manner of trouble, including that your cast on won't drop down. So make certain of the quality of your sponge bar. And the reason it's really important to n take note of that is since this particular comb is only likely to come with an older machine, and the older machines are not as fussy as the newer ones about knitting stockinette without a good sponge bar. If you don't know to check, you may get yourself into that particular pickle.